Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today. Let's jump right into the Word. We're over in 2 Thessalonians. Now, looking at one of the most profound passages in all the scriptures, Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, just to recap it very quickly, Paul said that he'd requested of them, uh, regarded to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together of him. So apparently somebody had a question about that, so he's going to deal with it. So he told him, you know, as far as the Lord coming again and our gathering together with him, don't be quickly shaken from your composure. Don't be disturbed. Don't be tricked by any spirit or message or a letter as if from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. So he's telling them, don't buy into that thing. Uh, this passage right here really undermines uh, what you what is, you'll often hear called imminency, the doctrine of Im- imminency. That idea is that the Lord can come at any moment at any given time and nothing had to occur from the time that the Lord was resurrected until his coming again. Well, that's simply not true because of what Paul says right here, that the day of the Lord is coming. So don't be deceived. Verse 3 says, don't be deceived because remember what I told you, that the apostasy comes first. Okay, there's two things that are going to occur. The apostasy is one of them. We've dealt with that in previous episodes. And then the man of lawlessness will be revealed, the son of destruction. And remember how he described him? He says he's the one that's going to oppose and exalt himself above every so-called God. He's going to seat himself in the temple of God. And he's literally going to display himself as God. He's going to call himself God. But then Paul reminds him, says, don't you remember I told you about these things? That there's someone who's restraining him now. And we saw before that I believe that that's Michael, uh, the, the protector, the archangel is protector over Israel that's restraining this spirit of lawlessness. So let's just pick that up in verse 6. And you know what restrains him now, so that in his time he will be revealed. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now is restrained will do so until he's taken out of the way. So that restrainer is going to restrain this mystery of lawlessness, this spirit of the Antichrist, as John called it in 1 John. He's going to restrain that, but then when he's taken out of the way, when the restrainer is removed, okay, when the restrainer is removed, then this mystery of lawlessness is going to be made manifest. Verse 8 tells us, Then that lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will slay, with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. So God tells us what's going to happen, and then he gives us great hope because in verse 8 he says, this lawless one, he's going to be revealed. Okay, It's going to be revealed at that point in time when the restrainer is brought out of the way. But the Lord is going to slay him with the breath of his mouth. Now that is interesting because when you look at the timing of all this kind of stuff, you find out that God will ultimately deal with this lawless one, but then he's going to ultimately deal with Satan himself, who is the one that indwells this lawless one, who's the one who empowers him. But it's not going to be all at the same time. As a matter of fact, there's going to be at least a thousand year break between that time. Satan's going to be locked away for a thousand years. But at the end of that thousand years, at the end of the millennial reign of the Lord, God's going to set Satan free again. Why? That's a great question. It, uh, the, the word does not point uh, tell us point blank why. I think it's basically to reveal the heart of man because so often we think, well, the devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. <laughs> you know? Well, the enemy is going to be locked away during that thousand-year reign, and yet there's still going to be sin and rebellion. At the end of that thousand years, Satan is going to be released, and he's going to gather together the nations, and they're going to turn against God. Can you believe that? Lord Jesus is going to be ruling and reigning, and they're going to turn against him. And then the scripture tells us that God just slays them with the breath of his mouth. He literally just blows and just annihilates them, annihilates the nations at that time. And that's when he will deal uh, finally with this lawless one and with Antichrist. So we know that he's going to be revealed. We know that God's going to slay him with the breath of his coming and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. So the lawless one 
okay, the one that's actually the physical human being will be brought to an end when the Lord comes the first time. Satan will be dealt with later on. Verse 9 continues the same sentence. So he says, that is, and he gives more details about the lawless one. The one who's coming is in accord with the activity of Satan, with all power and signs and false wonders, and with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. So let me, let me just deal with the last part. Again, this is one sentence over three verses, right? We find out that this lawless one is going to come with the activity of Satan. That's the reason I can say that he's empowered by Satan. He's going to have the activity of Satan. Well, what's the activity of Satan? Look at this. Power and signs and false wonders. So it's literally power, and that word signs means attesting miracles. Miracles that will verify that he is who he says he is. And I tell you what, folks. The world is being set up for this right now and is being set up in a multitude of ways, which I'm probably not going to get into right now, but I may drop here or there. Ways that we don't even want to think about. Okay. Ways that if I were to drop it on you right now, you would say, oh, that's just foolishness. You're just being stupid. You're just being ignorant. Well, perhaps, but I don't think so. Because we find out that Satan has power. He has signs. He's going to have attesting miracles and false wonders. They're going to be wonders but they're going to be false wonders. And then he said this, and with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish. So this deception of wickedness is for those who are perishing. Why are they perishing? Because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. Let me tell you, there's going to be a lot of people who think they are, that they are believers, who profess to be believers, and they're not. They're not. They did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. They're going to be caught up in this deception. Uh, again, I could list a, a half a dozen different ways right now that the body of Christ is caught up in this deception. There's innumerable ways that the enemy is laying the groundwork for this right now at this moment. And it's going to be the type of thing that the world's going to look and they're going to be in awe of this lawless one. They're going to be amazed at his power, at his signs, at his wonders. They're going to think that he is the one that is going to bring uh, peace and comfort to all mankind. And you know what? God's going to let them think that. As a matter of fact, we're not going to look at it right now, but in the next episode, we're going to see what God's going to do. Okay, He's actually going to send a deluding influence upon them. In other words, oh, you want to believe that? Go right ahead. Go right ahead. You can believe that. How can we make sure that we're not deceived by this? Well, Matthew 24, Jesus tells us that. Okay, He says these days are going to be so intense. That uh, you know, even the elect might succumb to the deception, if possible. If you're truly saved, if you're truly repented, confessed, called upon the name of the Lord, and the Holy Spirit and the Lord dwells within you, then you will not succumb to this. You'll be in the Word. You'll be functioning within the power of the Spirit, and you'll be a portion of the true body, the organism, the body of Christ that will hold together and cling together to one another and to the Lord. Tell you what, my time's up for today, but I'll see you again next time. We'll continue this, okay? Goodbye.